What's up, noobs? I mean, hackers. If you're starting for the CCSP by ISC Squared, you're on the right video because today we're going over Chapter 4, Exam Essentials, and Review Questions from the Official Study Guide. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you're missing out on some epic videos and tutorials, all here to help aid and guide you in your cybersecurity and hacking adventures. Because to be a hacker, you have to think like a hacker. And you can't think like a hacker unless you have your black hoodie, your black shades, and your black knit cap. But, but anyways, I'm getting off topic. Let's hack into chapter four, exam essentials, review questions, so you can pass the exam. Boom. All right, guys, let's talk about cloud data security. So the first exam essential is understand the risks and security controls associated with each phase of the cloud data lifecycle. And that was reviewed back in chapter three. So pretty much know every phase has its own risk. And those risks are usually associated with a particular set or type of security controls. So also understand how import and export restrictions affect the field of information security. You need to be familiar with the international traffic in arms regulations, and you also need to be familiar with the export administration regulations. Also understand the various cloud data storage architectures. Be able to tell the difference between what file storage is, block storage, databases, and CDNs. So pretty much file storage uses a hierarchy of folders and files just like your traditional environment block storage is a blank volume that a customer or a user can put anything into and is often associated with infrastructure as a service also know that databases can be implemented in any cloud service model but they are most often configured with your platform as a service or software as a service. Now your CDN or content delivery network is a form of data caching. Usually it's done near a geophysical location that is of high use and demand. Also understand how and why encryption is implemented in the cloud. So pretty much know the essential elements of key management. Know that encryption keys are not to be stored alongside the data they were used to encrypt, but that's also just common knowledge. Know about the emerging technology known as homomorphic encryption and how it might be used in the future to process encrypted data without having to decrypt it first. Be familiar with the practice of obscuring data. Know the different techniques of data masking, obfuscation, anonymization, randomization, and tokenization. So in a nutshell, masking is the art of hiding data with useless characters. For example, showing only the last four digits of a social security number. Randomization is when you replace data with random characters while leaving its traits intact. For example, the length of the string, whether the string was alphabetic or numerical, whether it had special characters, uppercase, lowercase characters, etc. Um, all those traits will stay intact. It'll just be in random order. Now, obfuscation is the art of making data less readable and it can use any of those mentioned techniques. Tokenization is a practice of having two distinct databases. Uh, the first database will be the live actual sensitive data and another one with non-representational tokens mapped to each piece of that data. Also know that tokenization adds significant overhead but creates an extra degree of security and can also relieve companies requirements or dependencies on encryption for example pci des allows tokenization instead of encryption for sensitive card holder data chapter 4 also talked about being familiar with sim technology 
understand the purpose of a SIM implementation and the challenges associated with using those solutions. For example, SIMs are only useful when someone is actually looking at what they produce. Simply having a shiny new box that performs security functions is nice, but unless the information it provides is being harvested by someone who knows what they're looking at, the SIM can be just another bandage in a damaged environment and won't really offer any benefits to the organization or company. Chapter four also talked about understanding the importance of egress monitoring. Be familiar with the goals of data loss prevention solutions, how they are implemented and what challenges a cloud customer might face when trying to implement a DLP within the cloud data center. For example, data loss prevention tools can function in a variety of ways, but the general concept is that data is first identified, activity is monitored, and then the policies are enforced. Now let's jump into the review questions for chapter four. Question one, tokenization requires two distinct A, authentication factors, B, databases, C, encryption keys, or D, personnel. If you said B, databases, you are right because in order to implement tokenization, there needs to be two distinct databases, one containing the raw original data and the other containing the tokens. Question two. Data masking can be used to provide all of the following functionality except A, secure remote access, B, enforcing least privilege, C, testing data in sandboxed environments, or D, authentication of privileged users. If you said D, authentication of privileged users, you would be right because data masking doesn't support authentication in any type of way. Question three, what are the US State Department controls on technology exports known as? A, ITAR, B, EAR, C, EAL, or D, IRM? If you said A, ITAR, you would be correct because ITAR is a Department of State program. The EAR is a Commerce Department program. Question four, what are the US Commerce Department controls on technology exports known as? A, ITAR, B, EAR, C, EAL, or D, IRM? If you said B, EAR, you would be correct because the Export Administration Regulations is a Department of Commerce program. Question five, best practices for key management include all of the following except for what? Having a key recovery process, maintain key security, pass keys out of band, or D, ensure multi-factor authentication. If you said D, ensure multi-factor authentication, you would be correct because multi-factor authentication might be an element of access control for keys, but it is not specifically an element of key management. What are third-party providers of IMA functions for cloud environment? A, DLPs, B, CASBs, C, SIMS, or D, AAES. If you said B, CASBs, you would be correct. Question seven, what is a cloud storage architecture that manages the data in an arrangement of fields according to characteristics of each data element. Is it object-based storage? 
file based storage, database, or CDN. If you said C database, you would be correct. Question 8. What is a cloud storage architecture that manages the data and caches of copied content close to locations of high demand? Is it A object based storage, B file based storage, C database, or D CDN? If you said D CDN, you are correct. Question 9. Proper implementation of DLP solutions for successful function requires which of the following? Accurate data categorization, physical access limitations, USB connectivity, or physical presence? If you said A, accurate data categorization, you would be right. DLPs can be implemented with or without physical access or presence, and USB connectivity has nothing to do with data loss prevention solutions. And question 10. DLP solutions can aid in deterring loss due to which of the following? A. Randomization B. Inadvertent disclosure C. Natural disaster or D, device failure. If you said B, inadvertent disclosure, you would be correct because randomization is a technique for obscuring data, not a risk to data. DLP tools will not protect against risks from natural disasters or against impacts due to device failure. And that covers it for chapter four, cloud data security. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button because next week we're going to be going over chapter five security in the cloud. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.